Praise him, praise him. My God, my God. Let's give the Lord a great big hand today. Come on, we can do a little better than that. We're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Hell, hell, the Lion of Judah. Somebody say amen. I want you to know God is good and his mercy endure forever. Let me just say this to you all, if you don't mind. As we enter into this wonderful sanctuary today, we want to take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you to Holy Bethel Church of God in Christ. That's our listening audience also. Let's give them a hand. And in this church, we believe that every single person is somebody, but Jesus reigns supreme. Say amen. So don't you know you're in for a treat today. And the treat today is that the Lord Jesus wants to meet you right where you are. Say amen. We are living in the last days. And the Bible said that men will take unto themselves mockers and scorners, liars, laying in deceit. But don't you know God will always have a ruminant. He'll always have a people that will obey. And guess what? That is us. Somebody say amen. That is us. One time we were, the Bible says, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. We were yet dead in our trespasses and sins, but thank you, Jesus. He saw us while we were yet in our blood, and the Bible says, Jesus said, live. And we are alive today because we're living to live again. So if you will just, you will indulge me today and just pray with us today. Let's just see what God has for the body of Christ. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Dear precious and heavenly father, Lord, we do come before you this morning, not assuming any righteousness of ourselves, but Lord, we come to you today in the righteousness of your dear son, Jesus. And Jesus, we thank you that you are the propitiation for our sins, and not just for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Father, you are our paraclete, Lord. 
You are our go-between, Lord. You are our mediator, Lord. You are our advocate today, Lord God. And Father, if we have ever needed a time to be advocated for, surely it's right now, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you're with us today, Lord. We ask that you would bless this entire service, Lord. Bless every person that dons the doors of the church, Lord. Bless every person that would tune in through the media, Lord God. Bless every person that would hear your word because we do know that's what we come for, Lord. We're not coming for form or fashion, Lord. We're not coming because we want to be seen, Lord. But, Father God, we're coming because we want to magnify your name, Lord. We want to lift you up, Lord God. Now, Father, we're asking that you would move in a mighty way today, Lord God. That you would heal bodies, Lord. That you'll deliver minds, Lord. That you'll set people free in the name of Jesus, Lord. And, Father, we do vow, Lord, to give you the praise, Lord. To give you the honor, Lord. And give you the glory, Lord, for all the that you'll do and we thank you Lord Jesus in the name of Jesus we pray the church say amen amen, amen. you're going to find us coming today the scripture will be coming from the book of Psalm it'll be Psalm 23 a very familiar psalm but it's one of those psalms that never grows old because it's real say amen if you'll look at your screens and follow me as I read a psalm of David the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. All right, we had a little we had a little glitch there, but you know what? When there's a glitch there, there's a, oh here we go. I'm about to say, you gotta have backup. <laughs> That's called redundancy. Verse number four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, my God, my God, surely. There's something about that word surely. That means that it is immutable. That means it will not change. That means for sure, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Somebody say amen. Let's give the Lord a great big hand. If you have goodness and mercy following your life, let's give the Lord a big hand. A rousing applause. Say amen. Without any further ado, we're going to turn this portion back over to our choir, Holy Bethel Choir, saying, God bless you. Praise the Lord as we lift our hands in worship. This is a time that's personal to each and every one of us. I can't worship him for you. When we worship him, we worship him in spirit and in truth. I'm so glad I go to a church where I know the presence of the Lord meets us here. All we have to do is give him the fruit of our lips and the sacrifice of our praise. The song says, if you provide the fire, I will give the sacrifice. I'll provide the sacrifice. Come on and raise your hands again and tell him how much you love him. Speak well of him this morning. Hallelujah. If you provide the fire, I'll provide the sacrifice. If you pour out your spirit, I will open up inside. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up. Can you help me sing that? If you provide the fire, I 
I'll provide the sacrifice. Oh, hallelujah. If you pour out your spirit, I will open up inside. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up. Come and help us sing that. If you provide the fire, I'll provide the sacrifice. I'll provide the sacrifice. If you pour out your spirit, if you pour out your spirit, I will open up inside. I will open up inside. Let's try that again. Oh, if you provide the fire, if you provide the fire, I'll provide the sacrifice. I'll provide the sacrifice. If you pour out your spirit, if you pour out your spirit, Try it again. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up. Fill me up. Till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over.
my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting, this thirsting from my soul.
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are you grateful today? Let's give our choir another hand as they are leaving. It always bewilders me how a great God like our God is will come down Somebody was calling me. Sometimes when you hear somebody calling you, next time you should say, yes, Lord. <laughs> somebody said, that's what Samuel did. Have you ever thought about this? The earth can fit a million times into the sun. The sun is but one planet. The Bible tells us that God created the heavens and the earth and the fullness thereof. So not only is there a heaven, there's an earth, but there are, is a fullness thereof. And he created all of this for his pleasure. I don't know anyone who would be a God that would come down and give their life for their own creation. Somebody say amen. I said to myself one day, I said, Lord, you did that for us. And I couldn't see myself doing it for anybody. And he said, would you do it for your child? I said, now you, you right. I would do that for my child. And then God told me, that's why I want to make all of you my sons and daughters. Because if you're my sons and daughter, you're my children. And I don't mind giving my life for what I love. Somebody say amen. amen. Are you a soldier for the Lord today? When you're a soldier for the Lord, you're willing to give your life for what you love. So today we're thankful that we have two of the best leaders I can sit in the world. And here comes one of them right now, none other than Dr. Roosevelt Allen Jr., our pastor. And in her absence, we want to also give honor to our actual first lady, the supervisor of women, Rosetta T. Allen. Amen. It means something to have great leadership. When your name can precede you because of the works that you do, we thank God for that. Pastor. I'm going to have someone lead in the song. We'll have our pastor at this time. Amen. I really love the Lord. Oh, oh, oh. 
love the Lord on this morning, can you say something to God? Let him know that you love him. Oh, come on. Do you love him? Do you love him? Do you love him? Thank you, Lord. We love you on this morning, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And will you give the Lord a hand praise for all of those who are here and for those who are viewing there? And on my 40th wedding anniversary, will you help me to thank the Lord for my wife? God gave me a wonderful wife. No other woman could have filled that slot. Supervisor Rosetta T. Allen. Amen. We thank God for you. If you would allow me to, I won't be before you long, but I do want to do something that will take just a moment uh, before I give you a word that the Lord has dropped in my spirit. Uh, I, Elder King, I want you and your family to, to come forward. Uh, amen. We're so glad to see you and look at it. He don't know how to do nothing but serve. He's a servant. Oh, here you come. You're going to be last. But I want to just publicly say that I thank God for this family. For this family. You have to let people know you love them and appreciate them while they can hear you. When they first came to Holy Bethel, they had the little boys. And uh, the little boys now have become men. So they've been here for a minute. And they're doing great things in life. And uh, Elder King and Sister King have worked so diligently and faithful, faithful, faithfully right here in the ministry. Over the years, how many years has it been, David? I don't know. 16 years. And what they're struggling with right now is the miracle that God gave them. And I just told Elder King, I believe God blessed you because y'all faithful. When you're faithful, God will bless you. And as a pastor, it always gives me joy when someone is leaving and going on a journey to be able to stand before the people of God and say, I thank God for faithful servants having come through Holy Bethel. When Elder King first came, he, came, he was Brother King. And then he became Deacon King. Then he became Minister King. Then he became Elder King. And somebody said, I've never seen anybody become an elder so fast. But all I know is that when he became a minister, the Lord spoke to me. And the Lord said, make him an elder. And I went directly to Bishop Hopper and said, Bishop Hopper, I don't ask you for anything. But they already had this class going on, but I want you to please let this brother come, come in the elders class. And he just, he just looked at me and he said, y'all have to know Bishop Hopper. He said, well, he better not mess up. <laughs> I said, Bishop, he's not going to mess up. But now I know that the Lord wanted you to have that right away. I pray and hope that you're leaving here better than you came, yeah. that you've grown and that you learned something and that God is blessing you. And I thank the Lord that they're going all the way back to their home in Arkansas, where they met us. Uh, were y'all in kindergarten or preschool when y'all met? It was early on. But, oh, you say you ain't going, but you're going to go. <laughs> When it's time to eat and all that and pay bill, man, you've been in Arkansas so fast, we don't know what happened to you. But uh, uh, I think it's just wonderful that they're going back to Arkansas. And uh, I, a lot of times I don't say stuff, but I just believe that the Lord has a pastoral calling on David's life. And I'm just looking forward to mature and to blossom. He came in this morning trying to serve. I'm like, man, what you trying to do? He said, I'm going to serve until I leave. And so although he is going, this is my friend. I always tell y'all, have relationship. Relationship trumps membership any day of the year. And for people who say it's hard to get involved in a ministry, prime example, if you want to be involved, just get involved. 
Nobody will stop you. Nobody will hold you back. And one unfinished piece of uh, business we have, uh, when the prophetess over there was dedicated to the Lord, the church has something to, stole, to start her savings account. And I have this right here. And that's for the prophetess. And that you start her savings account for, no, don't let her tear it up now. <laughs> That baby, but listen, that's all right. When you turn it loose like that, God will give it back just that easy. And so with that being said, can we just pray for a moment? I'm going to tell you all something. Blessings carry weight. So, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for Sister King, Elder King, all of the children. Thank you, God, for every labor, for the hard work, for the consistency. Father, I pray that you bless them and keep them. This next phase of their life, Lord, I pray that you overshadow them, open up doors that they ne would never dream about, and pour blessings upon their head that they don't even have room enough to receive. Lord, surely they will bless coming in and they're more blessed going out. They will be highly favored above and not beneath, Lord. I thank you for your glory that's upon them. And I thank you, Lord, for their family. And thank you for using them, Lord. And we thank you for getting reports, and she is perfectly fine. And we love you right now, in Jesus' name, amen. Holy Bethel, will you help me to celebrate? Come on, y'all can do a little bit better than that. Help me to celebrate Elder King, Mother King, and the entire, the entire family. Amen. They, some of the, the young men are grown to have their own families now. About the same time David became a father, he was a grandfather too. I said, them babies look just alike. But Holy Bethel, again, put your hands together. We love them, we celebrate them. And may the Lord watch between me and thee while we have someone from another. And I still got something for you on the basketball court. You've been running from me. I ain't say I will beat you, I just said I had something for you. <laughs> A good laugh or two. <laughs> Amen. Y'all, he's still serving. I don't know what to do with him. The shoe. So we're, we're thankful. I just believe that um, it's right to do right. Now, I want to share a very brief word with you. Uh, Elder Coward, I didn't know you were here. But I want to share a brief word with you. Amen. Um, and I'll, I'll just um, start this off. Well, I'll start this off this way. And many of you know, some of you don't know, my mother passed um, last night, early this morning. Uh, and so it was on my heart to be here, not so much to preach, I preach all the time, but I told David it was important for me to bless him and his family. If someone's faithful in an assignment, be faithful. Do what you do. So, with the help of the Lord, Oh, I'm good, I'm good, good. I told my son, Nicholas, the problem with church folk is they don't act real. I looked at my youngest son and said, your dad's a man, just like you. Feelings, emotions, shed tears. But it doesn't mean I'm not saved. It's only in the church world that we act. And someone says, don't be this. I told my boy, you be yourself. If folk can't love you for being who you are, then they don't love you no way. That's right. I ain't got time to be something that I'm not. I want to talk to you from 1 Corinthians. And then I'm going to go take care of my mother's arrangements. My sisters are waiting on me. 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter. I love you, Dad Taylor. Eighth and ninth verse. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
Brian, won't you read those two verses? And the Lord reads, the word of the Lord is, Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Father, we thank you for your word. In these fleeting moments, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For you, O oh God, truly are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk to you very briefly this morning about let's work this out. We got some stuff we need to work out this morning. Let's work this out. You know, when we look at this verse, this Bible verse says that some planted, some water, but we are laborers. And what the Bible says, it says that all men, not some, but all men shall receive their reward according to their works. And the problem is that some people expect for God to do everything, and they don't want to do anything. And then some people try to do it all on their own, but you can't do this on your own. And then the other people who play Deacon Williams, they just play, but they never work. But this scripture reminds me that we have to work. I know that we're saved by grace and that by faith. But my same Bible also tells me that faith without works is dead. And, 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 and if I really have faith, if I really believe, real faith will cause me to have action. If I believe I'm going to do something that's different based upon what I hear. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's interesting how two groups of people can hear the same word. If a, it will profit one group, but the other group, it will not profit. And the apostle said it didn't profit the other group because they did not mix it with faith. In other words, they did nothing about what they heard. And in today's world, many believers will pack the church out. We can look good in our clothing. And some of us have become professionals at knowing how to have church. Knowing how to do what we do when we're supposed to do it. We can carry a service. We can carry a tune. But really don't know how to pray from our heart. We're building mansions that have no foundation. Look good. But unstable. In fact, most people who look at a mansion, they never take time to look at the foundation. They don't go and look at the foundation. They see a big house and say, that's so pretty. Jesus said, when you get the word, don't just be a hearer of the word. Well, I got a problem right there because some of us never hear the word. We won't come to church, nor will we come to Bible study, nor will we tune in and go back. But if you are a member of any ministry, God holds you accountable for the word that comes through that house. But Jesus said, be a doer of the word. He says, if you do what the word tells you to do, then you'll build your house on a strong foundation. And not if, but when storms come, when floods come, your house will stand. But if your house is not on a good foundation and you're not a doer of the word, your house will collapse. That's why I see many believers continue to collapse and crumble because they just never become doers of the word. It's good to hear. One of the most insulting things to any preacher is for someone to say, you preached a good message. And then go out and won't do what the message said we ought to do. And so we have to come to the understanding that we have to do 
be, be doers rather of the word. We have to do something. We have to work this out. Some people never work it out. They never do their part and they wonder why things don't work out. Even when God brought deliverance to the children of Israel, when they came out of Egypt, and many of you Bible scholars know what he did. He said, put blood on the doorpost, yeah. the blood of the lamb, look into the blood of Jesus. Yeah. And he says that you will be passed over. It wasn't enough for them to look at the blood, wasn't enough for them to have the blood in the house, but they had to take time to apply the blood apply the themselves yeah. on their own house yeah. in the manner prescribed. When God gives a directive, we just can't haphazardly do what we want to the way we want to do it. But it's important for us to do it the way God has directed us to do it. Look at your name and say, we got to work this thing out. Say, so whatever God says to do, do it the way God says. And you'll get the result. And then when God tells them that it's time for them to come out of bondage and come out of Egypt. And Moses tells them, let's go. Although there was a glory cloud over them, a pillar of fire, although there was a cloud covering them, they still had to get on their own two feet, Amen. walk out of their own houses, walk out of bondage, and follow the Lord. Amen. Some of us waiting on folks to drag us out. Sometimes I almost get offended when preachers preach and they say, grab your neighbor and pull them out. No, if your neighbor wants to come out, they need to walk out. You can pull them all you want, but if they don't want to come out, they're going to be like a yo-yo and they'll be right back in. I'm at a point where you don't have to pull me. Just give me the word, and if God opens the door, I've got to have enough sense to walk out on my own. Tell somebody, let's work this thing on now. When God opens the door, you got to have enough gumption to get on your feet and walk out of stuff. Stop saying you bound when God opens the door. Get up and walk out. He told them to walk out. They had to do it. But then I have a problem with them. Because in the middle of their wilderness journey, they start to look back at where they came from. Stop looking back at where you came from. They look back at where they came from. They got tired of eating manna. This old manna, we're tired of it. It's the same old thing. And Jesus tried to tell them the manna was representative of the fact that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. Saints should never get tired of God giving them the word. Manna was a daily miracle. They got tired of daily miracles. Sometimes I get frustrated with folk when God moves in mighty ways and we act like God ain't did nothing. And then they became hungry for garlic and cucumbers and for fish. That stuff that they had when they went captive in Egypt. You better watch your appetite. They, did, they had no palatable taste for what God was giving them where they were. They became hungry for where they came out of. And that made them lose sight on where they were going. A land filled with milk and honey. So they missed out on the better because they were stuck on the present looking back on the past. You got to watch your appetite. Because you are what you eat. You do know that, don't you? You can't watch porno all night on Saturday and then expect for God to use you on Sunday. You can't put stuff in your spirit that's unclean and expect for a holy God to get the glory out of your life. You better watch what you eat. Let, come on, tell you next. Let's work this thing out right. We're going to work this out, son. I'm here now. I'm here now. I shouldn't have come to you. Y'all shouldn't have let me come today. So we're going to work this thing out. You better be careful what you put down in your spirit because whatever you feed, that's the man that's going to live. Yes, sir. They don't want to talk about this in church. Everybody wants to feel good. Everybody wants to do all this, but we don't do good because we don't do the right thing. We don't do the truth. Stop talking about your weakness. This is my weakness and God knows my heart. Yes, God knows your heart, but stop feeding your heart the wrong stuff. Out of the heart flow the issues of life. They, got, they, they had no palatable taste. Their appetite was not for the things that God was currently providing. Made them lose sight on where God was taking them to. Don't you ever lose sight on where God is taking you to. Where he's taking you to is much better than where he brought you from. Don't let the devil trick you and make you think that you had it better when you were in bondage. I miss Jolene. I miss who, 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 who Dolly song about Jolene. 
Jolene must have been a bad chick. Jolene, Jolene, Jolene. Y'all know that song. But you can't let your appetite go the wrong way. Because it will mess you up. So we have these things written for our example. And as we come down to the New Testament, where we are right now, stop expecting for God to do everything. Amen. If you want to be saved, you just can't sit there in your seat idle. The Bible says if you want to be saved, you got to repent. Jesus said in Luke 5, I believe verse 32, that I came that sinners might repent. He said, I'm tired of folk being sorry, but I want them to repent. Amen. To repent means that not only am I sorry, but I'm going to turn and go in a different direction. God wants some folk that have a made up mind that I'm tired of sin. I'm tired of what I'm dealing with, and I'm willing now to work this thing out. I will go in a different direction. Ain't no point in coming up here, getting prayer, falling down on the floor, and rolling back down, and then going back to your home and when you leave the church. No point in coming to the altar, falling out and foaming at the mouth and already got your next high plan before you leave the church service. That that ain't repentance. The devil is a lie. But when you make up your mind, the old saints used to tell us, my heart is fixed and my mind made up. Y'all don't want to talk to me this morning. So you got to have that made up mind. You got to repent. Look at your neighbor and say, let's work this thing out. Work this thing out. You got to repent. You got, they don't preach repentance no more. But, but the early disciples preached repentance. When they went down and on the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up before 3,000 folk. He said, repent and be baptized. And then you'll get the Holy Ghost. You worried about speaking in tongues. You just saying mumbo jumbo. But you better have the power of the Holy Ghost residing down on the inside of your soul. Because the Holy Ghost that I know of is more than a tongue. Y'all better talk to me. The Holy Ghost I know will do more than make you talk. In fact, Jesus told his disciples, I got a whole lot of stuff to tell you. But you can't bear what I have to tell you. But when the spirit of truth yeah, mm, comes, y'all, the dear. When the spirit of truth comes, he says, then you'll be able to hear what I'm saying. Some of us can't even do the word because we can't hear the word because we ain't got no Holy Ghost down on the inside. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord says if you want to be saved, you have to at least do something. You have to repent. He says, confess your sins. He is faithful and just to forgive you if you repent. Why? Because we have an advocate with the father and and the blood oh we back to the blood we back to the blood you waiting for somebody to lay hands on you so that you fall out and you wallow in the floor but you better learn how to apply the blood to your own life you better learn how to say lord cover me with the blood every now and then if you in a struggle you having a hard time you gotta say god blood wash my mind blood wash my soul blood wash my desires how many folk know the blood still works the blood will go to the lowest valley the blood will go to the highest mountain the blood of jesus will never ever 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 lose its power all it takes, honestly, is one drop of the blood. One drop of the blood can save a... One drop of the blood will do it. The blood will never, ever, ever lose its power. It just will not. Tell your neighbor, say, let's work this thing out. Let's work this thing out. Let's work this thing out. And even when God saves you and when God brings you out, like I told you before, watch your appetite. You better be happy to get the word of God. You better be happy that the glory of God is over your head. You got to understand that God is taking you somewhere better than you went before. Look down your row and tell your neighbor, say, God is taking you somewhere. That's better than where you came from. If you really believe that I double dog dare you to shout and tell God thank you right now. I don't care if you're going through a trial right now. Tell God thank you. I don't care if you ain't got no water and your water been turned off in your house. Tell God thank you. I don't care if your freezer's halfway empty. Tell God thank you. You got to learn to praise God when it seems like you ain't got nothing going on in your life. Because what you got going on really is a lie. The Lord is taking you somewhere better than where you came from. Look down your room and tell somebody like you love them. God is taking you somewhere. 
that's better than where you came from. But God told me to tell this house it's time to work this thing out. It's time to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling because the Bible says that the righteous are going to scarcely make it in. Uh, Y'all don't want to hear this stuff right here, but you better work out your salvation. Some of us worry about other folk and worry about what they're doing, but I find I got a full-time job right here. I got a full-time job worrying about this boy right here, but the Lord said, work out your own salvation. Uh-huh. Look at your neighbor and say, work it out, work it out, work it out, work it out, work it out. Well, what kind of work, what kind of work am I going to do if I'm going to work out my own salvation? Uh, the Bible tells me that there's some things that I've got to do. The first thing that I've got to do is I've got to put off the old man. That's my job right there. If the Lord kills the old man, then why am I dragging the old man along with me? If the Lord says that I'm free, why am I taking the old man with me? But my job is to put off the old man. Look at your neighbor and say, you got work to do. You got work to do. All y'all got an old man. All of us got an old man. Stop looking at me like I'm crazy. All of us have a dual nature, a dual identity, a person we used to be that we really don't want to be. Stuff that we used to do that we really don't want to do. But some of us go back and get the old man. But the Lord says, take off the old man. Tell your neighbor, say, take him on off right now. He says, put, oh, this we talking about what we got to do. We going to work this thing out. He says, put away wrath. Put away anger. Put away malice. That means stop being malicious one to another. He says, put away filthy talking out of your mouth. Saints shouldn't be telling nasty jokes. And since I don't tell nasty jokes, don't tell me no nasty jokes. Uh, Saints should not be up late at night calling 1888 to speak to whoever is available on the line. Hey, don't call in and make yourself feel better on this evening. We don't talk filthy. We don't talk nasty. We uh, Y'all don't mind if I tell the truth this morning, do you? We don't talk like that. If, if a saint approaches you and they talking filthy, they got a problem going on somewhere. But the Lord said, you stop all of that. Well, maybe I miss something. The Lord say, just do this. Just lay aside every weight and the sin which does so what easily beset us. Now we get it twisted. We think that easily beset us means that the sin easily overtakes us. But, but really, really the meaning of easily beset us means that the sins can be easily done away with. Huh? You better look at somebody right now and say, whatever sin is going on, huh? whatever sin may be trying to take you down, the Lord sent me this morning to tell you that it can be easily done away with. It can be easily easily done away with. But tell your neighbor, we got to work this thing out. Uh, we got to work it out while we can. Uh, because night is coming when no man can work. Uh, we got to work it out right now. We're down to the 11th hour and God is saying, I need somebody. I need somebody to partner with me. I need somebody to work with me. I need for somebody to help get the job done. Uh, look down your road. If you don't mind serving the Lord, say, I'm the one the Lord is looking for. Uh, I'm ready to work this thing on out. And after you you began to take off the old man. You began to lay aside every sin. You began to lay aside that stuff. Then the Lord said, I got one more assignment for you. It's your job. It's your job. Uh, when you get up in the morning, nobody has to dress you. When you get up in the morning, nobody has to give you a bath and tell you what to do. But then spiritual realm, the Lord said, when you get up every day, you better put on the new man. Uh, put on the new man who is created in righteousness after God. Uh, you better get in the mirror, put on the new man. Uh, Y'all all hear me this morning. Look down and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, we got work to do. The Lord says, put on the new man. Put on the new man. When you put on the new man, you're saying, God, 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 I am who you say that I am. I will do what you say that I can do. I will be a doer of your word. And Lord, if you need for somebody to do whatever, Lord, then I am here for you right now. And God, I will do whatever because I'm putting on the new man. If I got anybody in here who don't mind putting putting on the new man every day that they get up I want you just to raise your hand and tell God thank you raise your hand and praise God for the new man I raise God oh, y'all just still playing church up in here I gotta go and I gotta get on up out of here but every time I put on the new man I, I began to be the man that God created me to be when I put on the new man I'm saying Lord here I am and whatever purpose you created me for Lord I'm gonna be the person you created me to be I need you to help me to preach for two minutes and look down your row and tell somebody you're gonna have to work on it a little bit 
but you can work on this thing and you can work it out with the help of the Lord and you can be who God wants you to be I've lived life long enough to know that man will try to get you off course they'll try to make you what they want you to be they'll try to make you do what they want you to do but I'm so glad this morning that I feel free because down in my sanctified soul one day I want to hear the Lord saying well done thy good and faithful servant some folk are good but they're not faithful other folk are faithful but they'll never be any good but I want to hear the Lord say well done if God say well done that means you got to do something look down your row and grab your neighbor by the hand say neighbor if God says well done that means you got to do something you got to do something for the glory of God you got to do something for the kingdom of God you got to do something that makes God happy you got to do something that puts a smile on God's face and that's why I'm here this morning and we're getting ready to go on out the door because my mama taught me one thing she said boy if you're gonna serve the Lord you better serve the Lord with all of your might and all of your strength and my mama would have told me this she would have said I'm going on to glory but you better go over to the church where the Lord assigned you for the Lord told you feed my sheep and after you feed the sheep then you come on back and do what you got to do but somebody got to understand that we got to get this thing right because again night time's coming and then it's going to be too late I generally need you to touch somebody I don't want you to hurt them but shake them right now and say it's time to wake up it's time to get this thing right it's time to be who God called us to be it's time to go where God is sending us to and the Lord said I told you to go into all the world and preach the gospel but I won't send you by yourself he said lo I'll be with you even into the end of time the Lord said you got a work to do that's why our presiding bishop said we got a work to do but I can't do the work out there until I do the work right here and now when the work is done right here now Elder Taylor I'm ready to work out there ain't no point in going out there at the devil's territory when the devil is tearing me up right here but I need for somebody to have a made up mind that for God I live and for God I die and I will serve the Lord all the days of my life and I will I will give God my best I'll go with nobody else will go I'll do it if nobody else will do it if I go by myself then I'll go by myself if I have to do it until I can't do it no more I'll do what the Lord wants am I talking to anybody in here you ought to look at your neighbor and say neighbor it's time to work this thing out after you work on yourself the Lord says it's time to get busy he said pray he said if you pray he said I'll hear your prayer I'll answer your prayer the Lord said when I tell you and you stretch out your hand he said my power will be there you ain't got to be no elder you ain't got to have no papers you ain't got to have no title but all you need is a Holy Ghost somebody say all you need is a Holy Ghost and the Lord said when you stretch forth your hand he said I'll be there when you open up your mouth and witness I'll save somebody's soul when you let them know that I am the Lord I'll show myself strong I'll show myself mighty in battle I will let them know what I can do somebody ought to clap your hands and say Lord I'm ready to do it Lord I'm ready to work Lord I'm ready to go ahead Lord and do what you want me to do he said when you stretch forth your hand I'll be in your hand touch and there will be power somebody say power y'all playing church somebody say power he said I'll give you power power to cast the devil out I'll give you power I'll give you power that the sick may be healed he said power I'll give you miraculous power I'll give you wonder working power you got to labor for that this perish of night I know your job is important but I refuse to put more into medicine than I put into God I refuse to put more into my office in the operating room than I put in my prayer room I'm determined to do more for God than I do for anybody else I got to get out of here and go take care of my business but I feel like working and I feel like running on I know what the end's gonna be I don't have to see what the end's gonna be but I'm gonna do what I gotta do now one will plant another will water it but we're all one 
You ought to look at somebody right now and say, don't worry about what you have to do. Say, we're all one. Say, we're all one. Everybody wants to be a preacher, but we need some teachers. Everybody wants to be at the pulpit, but we need some street workers. Everybody wants to be in the church, but God needs somebody who ain't scared to walk out there where the drug dealers are. Everybody wants to be in here dealing with folk who 80 and 90 years old, but God needs somebody who will go out there and reach the 12 year olds and the 14 year olds. It's time to work. I'm sick and tired of being idle. I'm sick and tired of being complacent. I'm sick and tired of the world dying. Why are we talking about we had good church? I love good church. The good church is just to charge you up. The church is only a supplement. Somebody say that's a supplement. You can't live on supplements. If you took vitamins every day and you never ate another meal, your behind will still die. But the church is only a supplement. But we made it a substitute. It was never designed to be a substitute. It was designed to be an energizer. Give your neighbor a high five and say, neighbor, say it's time to be who God told you you are. Put on the new man. Put on the new man right now. Get your mind made up. I am who God says I am. I will do what God told me to do. I've got power. I've got an anointing. I'm going to love the haters. I'm going to do what? I'm going to pray for the users. I'm going to keep them dear to my heart. When folk do me wrong, I'm going to overcome it with good because my anointing is on the line. My anointing is too special. My anointing is on the line. I ain't got time to play church now. The Lord is coming back any day now. We're down to the wire. We're down to the end. And it's time to get right with God. And come on and let's go on home and have a good time. What a time we going to have when we make it back on the other side. And just like I told you before, what do we want to hear the Lord say? Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Work it out, work it out, work it out. Work out your soul salvation. Work out your soul salvation. Work out your soul salvation. Let's get it right. For this is the hour. This is the season that God has called us into order. He's called us into the place of belonging. He's called us into this place that we are called according to his purpose. We are called the elect. And we've got to take the charge. The pastor has charged us on today. Let's get it right today. This is our season to get it right. For this is our hour, this is the time, this is the season, this is the purpose. We have been called for this very moment, for God has ordained and anointed us for this very hour. For us to go forth in the power, for us to walk forth in the anointing, for us to walk forth in the glory, for us to walk forth to do what the Lord has ordered and instructed us to do. For the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, for he has founded it upon the seas, and we've been created and for purpose. We've been created for his power. We've been created for his glory. It's our time to come forth and work out our soul salvation with fear and trembling. Lay aside every weight. Lay aside every weight. Lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us. For the enemy desires to kill us. The enemy comes in to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But the Lord comes that we might have life and that we would have it more abundantly. And I challenge you and I charge you on today that you give the enemy no power, that you give the enemy no grace, but we go forth in power and authority and we take back everything that the enemy stole from us. We go back and we redeem and reclaim the time, everything that the palmer worm, 
and the canker worm and the moth has tried to rust and has tried to corrupt, we come back and we claim it now. As ministers of the gospel, we take that charge clearly. We take that charge with persistence. As believers, take that charge seriously, knowing that God has come that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. So on today, I challenge you and I charge you right now that you do not walk back out those doors the same way that you came in. Just as our pastor came in and told on this morning, I challenge you that you make Jesus your choice. It's not an option, not a substitute, but make him your choice. That no matter where you go, that you have Jesus on your side. That you have Jesus as your protection. That you have the Holy Ghost that keeps you. The Holy Ghost that leads you. The Holy Ghost that guides you. So I open the altar right now for a couple of things. First thing is I open the altar for those who don't have a relationship with the Lord. I, the altar is open. We as elders, we come to minister to you so that you might understand and have the bread of life that you would go forth and that you will walk forth with the power and with the authority that God has anointed you with even now. Because we refuse to allow you to go back and be a suspect to the enemy. We take claim and we take charge even now. So if you fit that bill, we open the altar to you even now. For this is your season to get it right. The second call is for those who have walked away and walked astray Come on back. It's time to work it out. This is your season that God has anointed you for right now. You've been designed with purpose. You've been designed with power. You've been designed with grace. What better choice that we have even now is that we come to the altar right now. And the third call and appeal to the altar is that if you need prayer, come on to the altar. Maybe it's not just for you, but it, maybe it's for a family member. Somebody that you've been praying that the Lord would grab them where they are and that they will come back into the knowledge of knowing who God is. The altar is open. Now I know I'm not the only one that stands in the need of prayer. Everybody in here should be at the altar because we all stand in the need of prayer. We need the power and the grace of God to cover us, to shield us, to protect us, to keep us, to loose us, to strengthen us. And we come in today knowing that God is going to do just what he said he's going to do. Elders, release yourselves and begin to lay hands and to pray for those that are here. For the needs are great, the power of the Lord is in this place. The anointing of the Lord comes in to restore, to renew, to strengthen, to cover, and to anoint even now. Father, in the name of Jesus, it's once again that we come before your throne of love, mercy, and grace, O oh Lord, just to say thank you, Lord, for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for your mercy, O oh God. Thank you for your kindness, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for being our healer, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being our maker, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being our shaper, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for holding us close to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for never letting us go, O oh Lord. Even when we strayed, O oh Lord, you were right there in the midst, O oh God. So, Lord, we say thank you right now, Lord, that you didn't leave us, O oh Lord. Lord, we say thank you that you didn't forsake us, O oh God. We say thank you, Lord, that you kept us, O oh Lord. Lord, we say thank you that you wrapped us in the call of your hands, O oh Lord, and in the center of your care, O oh God. We say thank you right now, Lord, for your good goodness, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your power. Thank you for your anointing, O oh Lord, that destroys every yoke, O oh God. Now, Lord, as we, O oh Lord, pray, O oh Lord, for those, O oh Lord, that have thought it not robbery, O oh Lord, to come to the altar this morning, O oh God. We pray, O oh Lord, for your anointing, O oh God. We pray for your grace, O oh God. We pray, O oh Lord, that you, O oh Lord, will loose every stronghold, O oh Lord. We pray, Lord, that you will loose every weight, O oh God, that we will walk forward.
forth, O Lord, under the power and the authority, O Lord, that you have anointed us, O Lord. For, Lord, this is the hour. This is the season, O Lord, that you have called us to, O God. And so, Lord, we will come, O Lord, with our hands lifted, O Lord, with our mouths, O Lord, expressing praise, O God. O Lord, with our mouths, O Lord, to give you the glory, with our mouths to give you the praise, O Lord. For, Lord, you are worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be lifted up, O God. And, Lord, we come, O Lord, to magnify your name, O Lord, that your oil, O Lord, will fall as never before, that your glory, O God, will come in, O Lord, as never before. That you, O God, will heal, set free, and deliver, O God. Lord, we pray, O Lord, for those places, O Lord. Secret prayers, O Lord. Those things, O Lord, that have been hidden, O Lord, in the hearts, O Lord, and in the minds, O Lord, of your people, O God. We pray, O Lord, that you will release even now, Lord Jesus, that your anointing, O Lord, will be released as never before, Lord. Well, Lord, we pray, O Lord, that you, O Lord, will destroy the hands of the enemy, O Lord. O Lord, take your hands. We pray, Lord, that the enemy takes his hands off, O Lord. This your servant, O God.
Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Come on, let's celebrate the name of Jesus. Let's celebrate the name of Jesus. Let's celebrate the name of Jesus. We didn't come in here to look at everybody else, but I said, let's celebrate the name of Jesus. Let's celebrate the name of Jesus. The Bible declares, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. We didn't come in here to look at you and you and you. I didn't come to look at you, you and you, but I came in to bless the name of the Lord. So let everything, let everything, let everything, let everything that hath breath praise ye the name of the Lord, for he's worthy to be glorified. He's worthy to be magnified. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, the Lord is worthy to be praised. Oh, come on, Holy Bethel, and magnify the name of the Lord. Come on, Holy Bethel, magnify the name of the Lord. For the Lord is our strong tower. The Lord is our shield. The Lord is our fortress. The Lord is our buckler. The Lord is our strong tower. The Lord is our refuge. The Lord is our very present help in the time of trouble. The Lord is our shepherd that we shall not want. Hallelujah. Even though we walk to the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear what? No evil. For thou art with us. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort us. Thou preparest a table before us. Where? In the presence of our enemies. The enemy sees what you are destined for, and he's envious of what you have inside you. So if you know that the Lord has been good to you, if you know that the Lord has blessed you, if you know that the Lord has kept you, if you know that the Lord has healed you, if you know that the Lord has woke you up this morning, if you know that the Lord has brought you to this house on today, you owe God a praise. You owe him a hallelujah. You owe him a thank you, Jesus. You owe him a hand clap. You owe him a foot stomp. You owe him the glory. For it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Neither are we destroyed. For great is the Lord's faithfulness unto us every single day. Every time I open my eyes, the Lord's been good to me. Every time I turn around, brand new mercies I see. Every time I open my mouth, brand new mercies I see. Every time I lift my hands, brand new mercies I see. So I give God praise for the brand new mercies. Every time I turn around, brand new mercies I see. Every time I think of the goodness of Jesus, brand new mercies I see. Every time I lift my feet, brand new mercies I see. Every time I lift my hands, brand new mercies I see. For if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, I don't know where I would be. So I thank God for his power. Hallelujah. I thank God for the blood that still works. I thank God for the blood that still works. I thank God for the blood that still heals. I thank God for the blood that still prevails. I thank God for the blood. It is the blood that sets us free. It is the blood that redeemed me. It is the blood. It's the blood, the blood, the blood. The blood signed my name. I've been washed in the blood. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. Hallelujah. Nothing but the blood. We give God thanks for the blood. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give God thanks. Come on, let's celebrate the name of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I thank the Lord for his goodness for his mercy, for his kindness. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord. 
At this time, we're going to turn the service over into the hands of Elder David King as he leads us into our offertory appeal. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I know I'm supposed to do the offering, but I just want to pray for our pastor. Can we do that? Can everybody stand with me and let's pray directly for our pastor and his family? He lost his mother and came and preached the word. Amen. Come on, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, look on Dr. Allen right now, God. Touch him right now, God. Restore strength to him right now, God. Lord, you're a humble servant, oh God. Lord, you see him dealing with bereavement, oh God. So give him comfort and strength on today, God. Look on the entire family, oh God. All the grandchildren, oh God. His sisters, oh God. His wife, God. Lord, we want you to strengthen them right now, God. Move on them right now. Let your anointing carry him right now, God. Lord, we know mother, oh God. We know she was a woman of God. We know she was a powerful preacher, oh God. And we know she met you all the way, God. So, Lord, look on the family right now, God. Encourage their hearts right now, God. Touch them right now, God. Let us all look on them with love, oh God, and take care of them according to, the, to your will and to your way, God. Lord, I ask that you bless our pastor right now, God. Strengthen them, God. Let them not feel alone in this moment, oh God, but let us love on them, oh God, with everything you've given us, oh God. If it was one of us, God, he would have been there. So, Lord, let us be there for him, God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you uh, for standing in prayer for our pastor. Amen. And now I'm going to do this uh, for one last time, I guess, since this is my last Sunday. Uh, it's offering time. It's offering time. It's offering time. Praise the Lord. It's offering time in the house of the Lord. We all can participate. We all can give and we all can bless the house of the Lord. And we're going to give our tithes. We're going to give our offering and we're going to give to. All right. I think y'all got it. So when I come back, I'm going to see the rest of the building done. Amen. Because you're giving to the building fund. Amen. And I'm going to be checking on it. Don't, don't worry about it. I'm going to check on it. So I, ain't, I might be leaving, but I ain't going nowhere. You remember that. All right, so everybody, it's you, everybody, we can give right now. If you uh, need a tide envelope, uh, raise your hand. The ushers will get that over to you. If you need to use your debit card, the machine set up over here to my right. You can go ahead and use that. But you can also go in on PayPal, uh, go into Givelify. You can go to the church website. And you can give that way. But I want everybody to give something and bless the house of the Lord. Hey Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand and I'm going to ask you to come down the aisles with the leading of the ushers. I'm going to pray over the offering and then uh, we'll let you give. Heavenly Father, look on the offering that we're about to receive. We ask that you bless it according to your will and to your way. Look on each and every heart. Bless them to give according to your power, to your authority, and to your anointing. And we let your will be done even as we give on today. In Jesus' name, amen. You're now in the hands of the ushers.
choosing to worship with Holy Bethel. We pray and hope that everybody's had a great week. Our weekly service schedule will remain the same with Sunday morning worship beginning at 10 a.m., Wednesday night Bible study at 7 p.m., and Friday night prayer at 7 p.m. Sunday school actually takes place on Saturday mornings at 10 a.m., and we will continue to have our morning manna prayer daily at 7 a.m. The next baptism service for anyone interested will be June 30th. If you would like to sign up, please see Missionary Angela Wright or Elder Grant Thomas following service. And another announcement to add to it. Oh my goodness, it is officially summertime. Everybody say summertime. I know it's time for vacations, it's time for cookouts, it's time for all kinds of things, family reunion. But we can't leave out Vacation Bible School. Woo! Our theme this year is Breaker Rock Beach. God's rock, solid truth on a world in a world of shifting sands. Vacation Bible School will take place Tuesday, July 9th through Friday, July 12th on the grounds of Holy Bethel Church from 6 to 9 p.m. That's with dinner included. So nobody has to say, oh, I got to rush home, feed the kids and come out to, uh, uh, to buy a Vacation Bible School. We're gonna feed you right here. So come on for dinner hour from 6 to 7. Come on to get the family fed. Our classes will begin at seven and then we have some extracurricular activities planned for you such as painting, Zumba, and we're gonna try to bring back some crocheting and some knitting too. Teach these young folks what it's all about, amen. And our scripture for our vacation Bible school comes from Romans 12, the second chapter, second verse, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Classes are for all ages. And anyone who's interested in signing up to be teachers or to work with us, or you have a special talent, you like to make jewelry or something that you can do to help us out, please see Elder Bellinger in the foyer after service. So let's get involved with our uh, Vacation Bible School and let's have a great turnout, amen. We honor the name of the Lord on today. Thank God for God's goodness and his grace. We thank God for the leaders that he's placed upon these walls. We thank God for the leaders that he's placed upon these walls. We thank God for the leaders that he's placed upon these walls, amen. We're so honored that you thought it not robbery to come by Holy Bethel and to visit us online. We thank you on, on today. We honor the Lord for his goodness and ask you to make sure that you take charge and take heed to the announcements that have been set forth. Holy Bethel, I will ask one request of you. I will ask one request of you, Holy Bethel. This week, I need you to show up as you've never shown up before for our leaders. Show up as you've never shown up before for our leaders on this week. They need you. They need you as never before. So show up for our leaders on this week. Amen? How many people are going to show up for the leaders on this week? Let's celebrate the name of the Lord. Amen? That was weak. Celebrate the name of the Lord for the leaders. We're going to ask you to, to take heed to the announcements that have, that have been set forth on this week. And we are going to open the doors first and foremost before I do anything else. If there's anyone that wants to be a part of this great ministry that God has ordained. You saw how our leader came in, even in the midst of bereavement, came in and preached such a powerful word that charged us to get things right, to take back our lives and to do the things that God has anointed us to do. If you are sitting here, you're looking for a church home, the doors of the church are now open. We would love to have you be a part of this fellowship for God has is doing great things. He continues to do great things. So if you would like to be a part of this great ministry, come on forward or meet us after, after service. And if you're shy to walk up for it, we'll take you in even uh, in the very back. So see one of us on today if you want to be a, a part of this great ministry. Amen? 
Amen. Holy Bethel, would you like to see new members come in? We're loving church. This is a place where everybody is somebody, but Jesus reigns supreme. Amen. And at this time, we're going to release our online audience. Thank you so much for joining in and tuning in with us on today. We pray God's peace and his grace with you as you go, out, go throughout this week. God bless you and keep you. Amen. And at this time, we're going to turn the service over into the hands of elders.